The Honorable Richard V. Spencer, Secretary of the Navy, arriving. Seventh Fleet, arriving. Bye, boys. Left. All right. Face. Post. Bye, boys. John S. McCain, arriving. Guests and visitors, please take your seats. John S. McCain crew, at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, the commanding officer of USS John S. McCain, Commander Micah Murphy. Good morning. Secretary Spencer, Vice Admiral Sawyer, distinguished guests, officers and crew of the USS John S. McCain. Thank you for being here this morning to mark this historic and unprecedented ship rededication. July 12th has a special connection with ships named USS John S. McCain and the McCain family. On July 12th, 1952, Mrs. Roberta McCain, the ship's sponsor, bashed a bottle of champagne across the bow of the first USS John S. McCain, named after her father-in-law, Admiral John Sidney McCain Sr., as it was launched into the warm summer water in Bath, Maine. Among the many distinguished attendees that day was the 16-year-old son of the ship's sponsor and grandson of the man for whom that ship was named. Almost exactly 42 years later, on July 2nd, 1994, this great ship was commissioned, also in Bath, Maine. Present again was a long list of distinguished guests and members of the now well-known renowned military family, the McCains. This time, the namesake of the USS John S. McCain also officially included Admiral John S. McCain, Jr., in recognition of, of his significant contributions to the Navy, our country, and his impact on the Pacific region. At this commissioning ceremony, that 16-year-old at the first event, in his own right, an accomplished retired naval aviator, prisoner of war survivor, senator from the great state of Arizona, and an emerging leader on the world stage. Now, to my knowledge, Senator McCain has visited the ship a handful of times. At the christening and commissioning here in Yokosuka in 2009 on a Codel when, according to uh, Captain Kim, he nonchalantly grabbed a copy of his book, Faith of Our Fathers, from the wardroom shelf, and, he, uh, and, and walked over and inscribed, to the officers of USS John S. McCain, with every good wish and smooth sailing, John McCain. And then most recently, and probably appropriately, when he visited the ship in Cameron Bay last June. Now today, exactly 64 years since the first ship was christened USS John S. McCain, we are gathered to officially include Senator John Sidney McCain III as part of the ship's namesake and rededicate the ship, and in doing so, ourselves, to fight for the ideas and principles each of these men champion. Senator McCain described these principles in his book, Faith of Our Fathers, when he wrote, Glory belongs to the act of being constant to something greater than yourself, to a cause, to your principles. No misfortune, no injury, no humiliation can destroy it. This is the faith that my commanders affirmed, that my brothers in arms encouraged my allegiance to. It was my father and grandfather's faith. Through a life of national service, Senator McCain has proven that even the most difficult challenges be can become sources of great strength. Many people, including Senator McCain, Secretary Spencer, Admiral Richardson, and Vice Admiral Sawyer, have been very supportive in our crews and repair team's efforts to get this warship back to sea, better and stronger than ever. And we are grateful for the support we continue to receive from them and some, so many others. I had the unique opportunity and privilege to work for Senator McCain as his legislative fellow. I'm blessed to have had this once-in-a-lifetime chance to work for an American hero and get a behind-the-scenes look at how he fervently and selflessly serves his country, loves his family, and supports the men and women in our armed forces. At the commissioning ceremony in 1994, Senator McCain introduced President George H.W. Bush as the guest speaker. President Bush closed by saying, Someday, not so very long from now, 
This superb destroyer will indeed be sailing in dangerous waters, and she will sail safe because of the three things we have talked about on this beautiful summer morning, family, country, and Navy, the three pillars in the life of USS John S. McCain. President Bush's words ring just as true today. After Secretary Spencer finishes his, his remarks, we will be observing colors. The flag that we fly today, as well as the commissioning pennant that flew during the Senator's visit in Vietnam, will be given to him to commemorate the ceremony and the Secretary's historic announcement. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to this morning's guest of honor. It is my distinct privilege to introduce you to the Honorable Richard Spencer. Richard V. Spencer was sworn in as the 76th Secretary of the Navy on August 3, 2017. Secretary Spencer graduated from Rollins College in 1976 with a Bachelor of Arts in Economics. Upon graduation, he joined the United States Marine Corps, where he served as an H-46 pilot until 1981 before departing active duty to enter the private finance sector. Secretary Spencer worked on Wall Street for 16 years with responsibilities that centered on investment banking services and a particular focus on strategic advisory services and capital market underwriting. Prior to his nomination, he served on the Defense Business Board and the Chief of Naval Operations Executive Panel. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Secretary Richard Spencer. I want to thank you all for being here today, Admiral, Captain. It's a very meaningful day for our Navy family. Because here today, we're going to honor one of the great names in American history across the board, John S. McCain. It's a name in three parts and a name that has three stories. Today, we add the name and the story of Senator John McCain, the spirit of the mighty vessel which always carries the legacy of his father and grandfather. As a warrior and a statesman, he always put country first. Senator John McCain never asked for this honor, nor would he never seek it. But we would be remiss if we did not etch his name alongside his illustrious forebearers. Because this country would not be the same if it were not for the courageous services of all three of these great men. It's hard to believe it, but the name McCain was at once synonymous with the Army. From Washington to Pershing, there was always a McCain standing by to fight on land. But the first namesake of this vessel took his name to sea when Senator John S. McCain, Sr., Sidney, bypassed the Great Gray of West Point to don Navy and Gold. I get pardon, Blue and Gold, Navy Blue and Gold. After his career took him from coal-powered battleships of Teddy Roosevelt's Great White Fleet to the flight training he completed in his 50s, Sidney embraced innovation and change at every turn. And it was his combined background on the surface and in the skies that helped inform his historic decision to turn his ships into the wind at Leyte Gulf and launch from well beyond normal range. This daring maneuver, as some of you well know, provided critical air cover for the landing and likely hastened the end to World War II, paving the way for a new era of peaceful partnership exemplified by the presence of this ship in the yard today. Unfortunately, Sidney did not live to enjoy that peace. But he did get to shake the hand of his son, Jack, on board a submarine tender in Tokyo Harbor, days after the armistice was signed. Like his father, John S. McCain, Jr. excelled in a new era of naval warfare. But while his father took to wave and air, Jack went below, commanding three submarines through intense action before the war was over. Jack continued to push the spirit of innovation through many more commands at sea before assuming command of Naval Forces Europe. As a renowned speaker, leader, and teacher, he inspired a whole generation of great Navy leaders. He was fond of saying, the 20-year-old Blue Jacket is the backbone of the United States Navy, a constant that remains true to this day. He knew where the true strength of the Navy resided and continued to reside. It is in our people. 
He then carried that conviction into a distinguished tour as Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet at the height of the Vietnam War. He cared deeply about every sailor and Marine under his command. But it's safe to assume that an extra measure of pride was reserved for a young aviator who shared his name. And it's hard to imagine the measure of pain that his father shouldered when that young aviator was captured, tortured, and imprisoned for five years. Perhaps it was the character of his family or a drive all his own, but it was the third John McCain who carried the family name through his greatest test and its greatest triumph. From the Naval Academy to flight school and throughout his time as prisoner of war in Vietnam, John S. McCain III displayed unfailing honor and duty to country. It was at the end of his service he would still be renowned as a hero. But his desire to serve did not stop when his uniform came off. Oh, no. He continued to serve, first as representative, and to this day as a senator from the great state of Arizona. At every turn, through every test, John McCain put his country first. And for any of you who have testified before, or have been confirmed through John S. McCain, and you survived, you know that he is ensuring that national security comes first over all else. President Ronald Reagan knew John when they worked at opposite ends of Pennsylvania Avenue. And he could have been talking about John and his father and his grandfather when he made the statement that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We do not pass it along to our children in our bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them to do the same. The McCain family has always stepped forward to assume that sacred responsibility. On 9 May 1989, my good friend and at that time Secretary of the Navy, Will Ball, named the ship after the first two McCains. And now I'm proud to add a third because three of a kind is the way to go into battle. Sidney, Jack, and John, three distinguished officers, three truly remarkable Americans. They sail along every man and women on this ship. Their legacy lives on in all of you and in the enduring spirit of the John S. McCain. With that, I want to thank you all. Department of the Navy, Office of the Secretary, SECNAV Notice 5030, from Secretary of the Navy. Subject, name added to ship currently in the fleet. Purpose, to advise addressees of the approved name expansion for the guided missile destroyer USS John S. McCain, DDG 56, to include Senator John S. McCain III. Name source, expanding the name of USS John S. McCain to include Senator McCain, properly honors three generations of dedicated service to our Navy and nation. Admiral John S. McCain served as a distinguished carrier task force commander of World War II. Admiral John S. McCain, Jr. served as the former commander-in-chief, U.S. Pacific Command. Senator John S. McCain III continued the legacy of service as a naval aviator during the Vietnam War. As a prisoner of war, McCain pre represented our nation with dignity and returned with honor. Signed, Richard V. Spencer. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the execution of morning colors. Distinguished guests in uniform, please salute at the sound of the whistle. Commander Murphy will salute for the crew. John S. McCain, Wardroom and Chief's Mess, turn and face the ensign.